What's up, YouTube? It's Coach Corey, and today we're going to rank all the brawlers from best to worst. So, let's get into it. Alright, so before I start, of course, I want to say this is an overall brawler ranking list, and it's not based on team camp, just how strong that brawler is overall combined within all of the game modes. So it's just overall ranking. Just because it's ranked at the bottom doesn't mean you can't win with it, doesn't mean you can't do well with it. it just means it's not great at a lot of things. The ones at the top are good at pretty much everything. All right, so let's start out, and we're going to start out at the bottom. Guys, this ranking list is totally different than the last ones. The brawlers are in totally different places from before. Pretty much, I think everyone is pretty different. So... I don't know, it's definitely a different meta. Let me know what you guys think of the current meta, but let's start at 19. So 19, this brawler has definitely taken a big hit. There's been a lot of really big changes in these rankings, and this one at 19 is Nita. Man, I still honestly like Nita a lot. Nita is definitely still pretty good in smash and grab, and you can use Nita to some degree in bounty, depending on map, but to be honest, this is a long range meta, and those brawlers deal a ton of damage, and Nita just doesn't compare well. Nita is pretty good in a tank meta because Nita matches up well versus tanks. Gets a lot of shots off them, so gets a lot of bears throughout the course of the game. And a lot of easy shots. But in a long range meta, Nita is just honestly outmatched. And Nita is just one of those brawlers that's just not very good in a lot of different game modes. And because of the meta not working well for her and not being good in a lot of game modes, that's where you see Nita at 19. Now this next brawler, I think is a pretty controversial brawler. Honestly, I feel like this brawler should be not that bad, but because it's an auto-aim meta, this brawler really, really struggles, and that's Mortis. Mortis, to me, I like Mortis. He got a decent buff, actually, not long ago, where his dash now goes a good amount further, about a third of a tile more than it used to. So Mortis is not that bad. If you're a really good Mortis, I actually think Mortis would be a good amount higher in this ranking. But honestly, Mortis is pretty hard to use, especially with a joystick. It sounds like pretty hard to dodge right away as fast. And in this meta, with auto-aim meta, everyone uses auto-aim for the most part. So when you're in range to hit someone with a Mortis, they're going to be using auto-aim and they're not really going to be missing. So that's where you see Mortis this low in the ranking is people just don't miss Mortis when he's in range to attack. So he may get one or two kills, and then he's going to die, though. It's really hard with the Mortis to be really strong. He's still pretty usable in Brawl Ball, especially with that increased dash range. He's now definitely better in Brawl Ball than he was before. And you can definitely use him in Showdown by just escaping and running around. But otherwise, honestly, I don't feel like Mortis is that great. He just gets taken out too easily with auto-aim. All right, next brawler. You're going to see a lot of melee brawlers a lot lower than they were before. And this is the first one. It's El Primo. El Primo, to me, is the worst of all the melee brawlers, all the close-range brawlers. His damage just isn't that good compared to everyone else. As a tank, he doesn't have that immediate impact damage when he gets close to someone. They're able to escape a lot of times. El Primo just isn't the same as he was before, I guess. I don't never really felt like El Primo was super, super strong. Well, actually, he was in the tank meta. But in this meta, he's just... He just gets melted too easily. No one's missing. Colt, Ricochet, Brock, Piper, all these people are not missing their shots on El Primo. He's got a wide hit radius, and it's hard for him to get in close range unless the map is really suited for him. So that's where you see El Primo at 17. All right, so this next brawler, I actually think this meta is not that bad for her. She's really just not the most versatile of brawlers, and that's Pam. Pam pairs pretty well with long-range brawlers. This is definitely a long-range meta. Her healing turret is much more useful if you have long range people on her team because then they can use it much more. So she's definitely pretty good in this meta, but she's not that useful in a lot of different events. She's pretty good in smash and grab. She's okay in bounty and she's okay at best in everything else. And otherwise, she's probably not that good. So that's where you see Pam at 16. She's just not the most versatile of brawlers, but she's not that bad for this meta. All right, and then at 15, we have a brawler who's in a similar situation as Pam. Not great in a lot of different game modes, and that's going to be Poco. Poco is pretty good still in Smash and Grab and usable in a couple bounty maps and Brawl Ball and maybe Showdown as well. But Poco is just not great in anything, and the meta isn't that good for Poco. It's not horrible for Poco, but Poco doesn't particularly match up well versus people who just continually outrange Poco and... 
Poco's range is honestly not that long, even though Poco can hit a lot of people, but if all those brawlers are really spread out, Poco's not going to be getting nearly as much damage as he was before. And that's where you see Poco has really taken a big fall. Not the most useful in this meta and not great in a lot of different game modes. All right, and now we're starting to get to our first shotgun brawler. We got Shelly. Shelly, who used to be the auto-aim hero, has now fallen down a ton just because Shelly is not good in this meta. Shelly did get a damage nerf as well, about 5 to 6%. So Shelly definitely not as strong as before. And then Shelly's just not very good in this meta. I mean, before the most recent update, Shelly was never a really strong brawler was always pretty underwhelming and she really was only good because she was so easy to use and because there were tanks everywhere and Shelly is pretty good versus tanks as a shotgun brawler. But now that tanks are no longer used that often, you see Shelly being down a lot in the rankings and while she is pretty versatile, you can use her in a lot of different game modes, she's now no longer that good in any of the game modes particularly. So that's where you see Shelly a lot lower than she was before. On to the next bro. I'm just going to say these two at once because, let's be real, they're really similar. And at 13 and 12, we have Bullet 13 and 12, we have Daryl. More shotgun brawlers. These guys are taking a big hit. As I've said, it's now a long-range meta. And these guys just don't have the same impact as before. As now, it's a lot harder for them to get really close to their enemies without taking a ton of damage. So now, these days, they just get killed a lot faster than they were before so you find them getting less supers and they're getting less damage overall so they're not able to have the same impact nearly at all they're still definitely usable and there's still a lot of situations where they're useful any sort of close range maps if you have a good team comp built around them they can still be pretty good but to me they're just not nearly as strong they're definitely usable but they're not nearly in the same depth as they were before all right, and now at 11, we have a brawler who actually is pretty good for the meta, and I actually really like where this brawler is right now, and that's Tara. Tara, to me, is definitely not bad right now. Tara is really prefers a long-range meta for the most part, which is what this is, so this is definitely a meta for Tara. If it's a tank meta, Tara is not nearly as useful because you want to be supering in people who are low or medium health with Tara. That way, you can finish them off really quickly without them able to deal damage back at you. But if there's tanks, they're able to survive her super. So, because it's a decent meta for Tara, you really see her rising up the rankings. And she's honestly pretty bad. I might have even moved her up a spot or two, but she's still definitely pretty usable. And honestly, in a decent amount of game, but you can use her in Smash and Grab. You can use her in a little bit of bounty maps. You can definitely use her in Brawl Ball. And you can a little bit use user in showdown as well so tar to me is definitely a pretty decent brawler in a lot of things i definitely wouldn't underrate her all right next we have my least favorite brawler and that is Bo. Bo is honestly not bad in this meta though i have to give him credit and his star power of course is always really useful on certain maps so he's always at least fairly useful but Bo is pretty good in this meta he matches up not bad versus a lot of these long range brawlers he has a lot more health of them, fairly similar range, a little bit less, definitely less damage, but he's able to get enough damage on them to either make them retreat or make them have to heal up, or if they don't heal up, he can able to finish them off a little bit later, and his mines definitely can't be underrated, those are pretty good. People still aren't able to, in my opinion, they haven't adjusted to them as well as they were before, I don't know if it's because of the faster um, increase bomb speed of a blah, 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 the faster explosion speed that's what i'm trying to say Bo is pretty good though he's decent in a lot of things and he's pretty good in this meta all right next i'm going to do these next two brawlers at once because they're really similar and honestly i wasn't exactly sure which one was that much better at nine we have barley and at eight we have dynamic we got the two throwers they're definitely a lot better than they were before they're definitely pretty usable in a lot of different things. They're still really strong in Heist. You can definitely use them in Showdown. You can use them a little bit in Brawl Ball. You're seeing them use a little bit more in Smash and Grab. Their faster throw speed definitely gave them a decent buff. They're still not great in my opinion. I still find myself in situations where I'm uncomfortable or don't really like controlling them, aiming manually. They're definitely not very good with auto-aim, but their attacks are really fast. So you can have situations where you hit a lot of shots in a row. I think aiming sideways on an iPad is definitely a struggle with them, and aiming at your feet can be a bit of a struggle, so there's still situations where they're not that great, but they're actually pretty strong in a lot of other situations, so they're definitely pretty good. 
in this meta, not that bad, and they're definitely a lot better than they were before. I don't think you should underrate throwers. They're very versatile, and they're decent at a lot of things. All right, these next seven brawlers are all, in my opinion, really strong right now. I would definitely recommend all of these brawlers in a lot of different game modes. And starting out at seven, we have Jesse. Jesse, maybe not the most versatile brawler, but her shots are really easy to hit right now. So her damage potential has gone up a lot. Jesse is really good in smash and grab right now. She's okay in bounty she's pretty good in brawl ball and you can use her in showdown to some degree but jesse is definitely a little bit underrated in my opinion and she has a lot of damage potential honestly it's pretty easy to hit with her shots and she gets a lot of chain shots now as it's a lot harder to dodge that second shot after that shot after it bounces off one of your teammates it's now a lot harder to dodge in my opinion and her turret has always been pretty strong once it's up so jesse to me is definitely a really good brawler right now all right, and now at number six, we have another brawler who's hitting a lot of shots right now, and that's Spike. Spike, to me, is still a strong brawler, and I love Spike, honestly. He's so fun to use. He's really good in smash and grab. You can definitely use him in bounty. You can use him in brawl ball. You can use him in showdown. He's good to decent in a lot of things. Spike can't be underrated, and in these days, he is able to do a lot of shots fast and deal a lot of damage. And he's pretty versatile, I feel like. So Spike, to me, is definitely a good brawler right now. All right, now number five. This is probably the biggest change in rankings. And this brawler, you are seeing her everywhere. And honestly, she's really, really strong in any of the modes she's played in. I just think there's one or two modes where she's not good at all. And that's where you see her at five. And it's going to be Piper. Piper, to me, really, really strong right now. Able to hit a ton of shots and deal out a lot of damage fast. It's honestly insane, and she's definitely a little bit overpowered, in my opinion. But with the auto aim meta, it's definitely a little bit of a wacky meta. So Piper, to me, really, really strong. You can definitely use her in Smash and Grab now, which wasn't a good thing for her before. You can use her, well, obviously, you can use her in Bounty. She's amazing in Bounty. She's okay in Brawl Ball. She's... Honestly, still never good in Showdown, and she's not very good in Heist still. That's where you see her at 5, but she's amazing in Bounty. She's definitely good in Smash and Grab, and you can use her in Brawl Ball. She has enough damage. She's not preferable, maybe, but you can definitely use her. That's where you see her at 5. Really, really, really good in Bounty. Definitely the best in Bounty, probably. And definitely usable in Smash and Grab. Piper, so much stronger than she was before. It's honestly insane. She's just really not that versatile. So that's where you see her at 5, even though she feels really overpowered. Okay, next brawler at 4. This brawler also got a pretty big jump, but this brawler used to be really good. And that's Crow. Crow right now is honestly really strong. In a meta where there's long-range brawlers, Crow is able to deal with these guys really well. 10% less damage on long-range brawlers is much more important than 10% less on a tank. On those long-range guys, a lot of times they're chipping away to getting in multiple shots. Crow is really good at dealing with those brawlers. He has enough range to be able to keep his distance for them. Extra move speed definitely helps. And combined with his super, he can deal with those guys really well. Super with that auto-aim and then spam those shots. And Crow deals with a lot of the brawlers in the meta right now really well. Crow is also very, very versatile. You can use him in every single game mode, pretty much no problem. Brawl Ball is maybe his worst, but he's still definitely usable in every single game mode. Crow, really versatile and really, really decent to pretty strong in pretty much everything. All right, now these next three brawlers are, in my opinion, honestly insane, and they're really strong, and I would recommend every single one. All right, let's start out at three, though. At three, we have Ricochet. Ricochet deals an insane, insane amount of damage. All these three brawlers deal an insane amount of damage. And Ricochet is just really hard to stop. I honestly don't like the lesser range on Ricochet. It feels a lot less satisfying. I think one of the most fun things with Ricochet is bouncing shots. And having that extra range just has so much more possibilities with bouncing shots with Ricochet. But he's still a really, really strong brawler even without that. So I can't complain too much. He does a ton of damage and combined with auto aim, everyone is hitting shots with Ricochet and he is everywhere and there's a lot of scenarios you can use him in and he's good in pretty much every single game mode. All right, now at number two, the second best brawler in the game right now, in my opinion, is Brock. Brock is 
so strong right now. His rockets are crazy huge. It's really hard. Well, maybe not really hard, but it's hard to miss with his shots. It's really hard to dodge his shots. That's for sure, unless it's just manual error. Brock does an insane amount of hits and combine that with a lot of supers and Brock is just so versatile and he just does so much damage now and you can use him in so much more events because of that. You can definitely use him in Smash and Grab now. He's really strong and bounded. You can use him in Brawl Ball now. He's pretty versatile. You can definitely a little bit use him in Showdown and you can definitely use him in Heist. Brock really, really strong right now. Just so hard to dodge his rockets and he has a really long range compared to a lot of other brawlers so he has that advantage over a lot of people he can stay alive in this auto aim meta that's really good to have that extra range and it just makes him that much more useful and valuable to his team so brock really really strong right now all right i think at this point it's pretty obvious who the number one brawler is it's another brawler who does a ton of damage and that's Colt. Colt is just insanely strong right now. He hits so many shots and combine that with being able to just super at will, it feels like Colt just destroys people and he just destroys structures. He's useful in every single game mode, no question. Colt is just easily the best brawler in the game right now. You could have maybe switched two or three, but I think number one is undisputable. Colt is just the most useful brawler, does the most damage and is usable in every single game mode unquestionable the most versatile combined with the most amount of damage it's just insane and he has an extra move speed so on top of that he is able to dodge more shots than some of these other guys it's not that much more extra move speed but it does help a little bit Colt is just insane and that extra move speed also helps him hit more shots too because he can strafe in the direction that people are escaping from or to so he just is insane right now. Colt is definitely the best brawler in the game, unquestionable in my opinion. All right, guys, that's it for today's ranking video. Let me know in the comments, what do you think about these today's rankings? What ones did you disagree with? What ones would you change? How do you feel about the current meta? What brawlers do you think need a nerf? Definitely the top three in my opinion. But that's it for today's video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I will catch you later.